We've got some fresh new young talent doing some things that I know you haven't heard before. One, two, three, listen. Cut the sound. <laughs> yeah. Wow, not messing around. Freddie, we like wild in this house. I know. <laughs> I like this style, like, you, you've come in like, like as we've like critiqued. I, I love it, dude. Shit. Yeah. No, I mean you know what you're doing. Hot bench. Hot bench. Got lights. Got that. Benji's actually behaving. Benji, you are such a good dog. Yeah. Such a good dog. He usually gets crazy okay. with strangers. So this is all about the recording. He Good. Can you it. can do the headphones if you want to hear yourself. You don't have to. It's whatever you feel comfortable with. You guys, had, you guys are headphoning. Oh yeah. We're headphoning, but Let me try it. Let me see how it feels. Let me try. The <laughs> we rolling right now? Yeah, we're all we're, Heck yeah. we're, we're rolling always here. rolling. Doing a headphone. Wow, this is weird with the headphones. Yeah, Isn't it it fun, could, you get kind of used to it, but so that's recording. We're all good here. Well, since <laughs> we're just like chatting it up, um, let's go ahead and get into it. Let's do it. Welcome to the Freddie and Alyssa show. I am Freddie Smith. I'm the Alyssa. The beautiful <laughs> Alyssa Tabbit, and our guest. Today, Scott it's, Matheson. What is up, guys? AKA Gains. gains. <laughs> so many gains. All the gains. So many questions. I um, Before we hop in, and, and I would love for you to share your story, because even with you and I getting to know each other more, I'm really excited just to hear like your background and just so many things about you. But um, I want to let everyone know who hasn't met Scott before, um, I have to share the story with you. Because you know being in L.A., we meet a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And um, when we were sitting down at lunch one day at work mm -hmm. and we were just chit chatting, I remember finding out about your Instagram and what you do and we were looking at it. And you were one of the very few people that I genuinely like followed, you mm -hmm. know, because you like follow people. You're like, yeah. oh, I want to follow. And after seeing your content and watching your stories and finding out who you are as a person, your consistency, your hard work, mm -hmm. I truly became a huge fan of your work, your work ethic. And it motivates the hell out of me. So I just want to thank you for just being awesome. You're fucking funny. Like the the gain stuff. Like and I have to say too, like, I have to add, when he first came home, like once he met you and he started following your Instagram, naturally, like prime example of word of mouth, he would sit there and see stories and laugh. And I would always hear like this gains thing. And I'm like, who is this? What are you doing, babe? And he's like, oh my God, you guys see my bro Scott. And so he would show me it. And then I go, oh my God, this guy is like a just slice of heaven, just great energy. So I started following you and it's been so much fun because you're, you're so fun, so light hearted and just a good person and obviously what you do with your calisthenics I mean out of this world and we'll get into so that. as we just stroked you a lot right there <laughs> yeah, like, I just wow, wanted you, you to know like, though that like your work it, it means a lot yeah, and there's so many people who follow talented. you that I can see why you have such a huge fan base because you're just so genuine and like um, there's a lot to learn from everything that you're doing so I want to thank you for your awesome work and uh, <laughs> so Scott Matheson everyone well thank you guys for having me I really appreciate everything you just said and um, yeah, I don't. Wow, I feel so like <laughs> humbled right now. I don't even know what to say. Thank you guys. Absolutely, Thank you, of man. course. And and we'd love to to get to know you more. And I know we haven't really talked about like your story, like where you grew up. And uh, I want to get into your fitness and into business and into acting. And we hear our little dog's uh, nails <laughs> clicking Sorry, around. I shouldn't have put her down. High heels on. Um, Should we grab her? Is yeah, she, okay. yeah, yeah. I'll I'll, uh, I'll kick it off. Okay. Do we have too much dog her. games going on right now? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Demi's on it. She got it. Thanks, Demi. Thank you, girl. Thank you. The wonderful Demi. <laughs> Demi in the house. If I had another camera, we'd cut to you on the couch with the dog. It'd be awesome. Demi Bagby's here to trap the dog. In case you ever seen her, follow her. She's amazing. I was watching, yeah. I mean, uh, what is her social? Please plug it. Um, at Demi Bagby on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> She's amazing. <laughs> From San Diego. Yes. So that's what's up. Um, but yes, yeah, Scott. So what, what's your what's your story for for the for our audience who who um, if there's people who haven't met you before or even with like us, I'm so curious. Like, what's your story? Where were you born? What brought you to LA for acting and fitness and like all that good stuff? You want the entire story, like the whole thing? Heck yeah! Okay. Go for it, man. Okay, I'll give you the entire story. So I was born and raised in Sonoma, California. Um, small town, kind of that small town football feel. I almost feel like you watch like one of those Texas like Friday Night Lights type movies like that. Totally. Like just small town. You know, everybody drives lifted trucks, everyone plays football, kind of that oh, kind of nice. thing. Kind of a closed-minded type of town. And then I went to college after that at UC Santa Cruz, which opened up my mind quite a bit. Um, my dad's an accountant, and uh, my mom was a school administrator, so kind of a career track type of family. So I knew I was going to go to college, you know, finish college, get a job, or at the time, that's what I thought I was going to do. 
So when I finished college, I ended up working for an accounting firm. Um, okay. For basically, well, three years straight. Um, well, two different accounting firms. And in that time working in accounting, I was still like training and working out. Um, actually, I should probably rewind the story for a second. I first started working out in college. Um, huh. And this will come into play later, but it was on my very first day of college where for some reason I just decided that I wanted to start working out. I didn't know why I wanted to work out. Literally, the first day I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to the college gym and check it out. And Watch that was what, 18, 19? Like, I was 17 years old at the time. Wow. So so like growing up from like four years old to even like playing t-ball, like running around, like you athletic in um, like playing sports at all? or like Yeah, like I mean my parents had me in soccer when I was a kid, so I was running around playing soccer. It was pretty good. I mean not like the best but good and then yeah. you know um i played soccer up until high school and then in high school i played football and i was like again good not like the best or anything and you know we would work out for football like in the mornings at 6 a.m before class we'd go to football training and like lift but i was never like it wasn't like i was like i'm gonna go to the gym and work out it was like we were required to show up lift mm-hmm. weights to get stronger right. you know to play football so it wasn't until college my first day of college where i actually made the decision i was like you know what i'm gonna go to the gym and i'm gonna get stronger and so I went on that first day, I think I had a chest, you know, like typical yeah. bench press, had no idea what I was doing, just put on the weights and just repped it out. And um, that was day one. The next day I was like, wow, it was a good workout. I think I'm gonna go tomorrow and maybe I'll do like, I'll do some back, you know? And I kind of started like piecing together workouts from what I had seen in magazines and I'd be at the gym that are like mm-hmm. watching people like, ooh, that's like a good back exercise. I'm gonna go try that, you know? Yeah. And I just kind of started trying different things and I literally, from that day, that first day being 17 until now, I have not missed more than three days in the gym ever since. Yeah. Like, really? Ever. Yeah, like ever, because I actually like it. I liked it then, I like it now. And the reason I wanted to say that is because from that first day, I would always work out. It was always kind of like something I always did for myself no matter what I had going on. So if I was going to class at college or if I had finals or whatever, you know, like I would typically, you know, a typical school day in college for me would be like to go up to campus because UC Santa Cruz up, is up on a hill. So to drive all the way up there and kind of stay up there. So I'd drive up to class, you know, go to class, go to the gym, then go to the library. Or, um, what's up? No, my dogs. I'm going to hold yeah. them. This way is not interrupt us anymore. No, oh, no, it's not interrupting. We're just getting dog games on the show. right now. Come here, baby. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> and we're and back. back. And we're back. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so I basically be up on campus all day. Point is, in that you know, throughout the day, I'd always make an effort to go to the gym, or I'd plan my day around the gym always. More so, just because I liked going. Yeah. And so when school was over, I became an accountant. And while I was you know working as an accountant every day, you know, I'd be at work at seven a.m. Work all day, get off at six or seven. I would still go to the gym after, then go home, go to sleep, get up, repeat, and that was like my work life forever. And so after like three years of working as an accountant, I just realized that I just didn't want to do it anymore. And I just didn't know what I wanted to do. Like I literally remember the day sitting at my accounting firm, at my cubicle desk, staring down the hall. I could see my boss. And it was in that moment staring at my boss and I was like, wow, I could sit and work as an accountant for another 20 years and the best I'm gonna be really is him. (laughs) It hit me so hard in the face, I was like, I could just keep working and just put everything I have into this. I'm just going to be him. I just didn't, and I just like I just didn't want that. And so um, I ended up quitting. Actually, no, I didn't quit that day. But from that moment, I decided like, okay, what am I going to do? And I realized and I really, how old were you at this time? I was, let's see, probably twenty five. I want to wow. say. Wow. What am I? Thirty three now. Yeah, about twenty five. Okay. Let's see, I graduated college twenty one. Yeah, six years. Yeah, twenty five. And so I spent the next like week really trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And I realized that I just, what I really love is movies. Honestly, I love movies. Love the way movies are made. I love watching movies the way they make me feel. I love just everything about movies. I just love them. I've just, since I was a kid, you know, like rehearsing movie lines, laughing about movies, going to see movies, just, I just knew I wanted to be around movies. It probably sounds like a typical thing to say, but I just realized that's something I just really love. And so I jumped into acting class that day and that's when I quit my job, was that day. Thinking, because I didn't know anything about it, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna start acting class, and if acting doesn't work out, I'll just work in film somehow. I'm quitting. Wow. So I quit, and then I started going on Craigslist, and I get it, ended up getting on um, SF Casting, where you can apply for different auditions. So I was basically auditioning in the San Francisco Bay Area of California, trying to get acting jobs, oh. while working out, of course. 
This is like a long story. Is this too long for your podcast? No, no, I love no, no. This is the platform part. Okay, this is where you. Yeah, I'm sure you get the whole thing. I love it. Okay, okay. So I was auditioning in the San Francisco Bay Area, trying to get acting roles. Even though I just started acting class and I had no idea what I was doing. Um, side note, I probably should mention this too. Back when I was in college, I did some modeling for Abercrombie and Fitch back in the day. Like when I was walking by one of the stores once, I was like, hey, do you want to like do some modeling? You know, oh I'd never gosh. done it before. So I did some modeling back then for them. So when I was doing this new acting stuff, I was also applying for modeling stuff. They can like, oh, maybe I could do some modeling yeah, stuff again dude. too. That would yeah. work, you know? Again, same time in the background, always going to the gym, always staying in shape. And then not to interrupt you, but no, while you're away. doing this, yeah. are you, like, did you, like, save up money from accounting and then, or, like, how were you, like, funding this dream? Very good question. I did have money saved up, but I was burning it quickly, paying for rent and everything, and realized I needed to get another job. I was, <laughs> like, I was like, can I cuss on this or no? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I was like, shit, like, I need to get money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So then I jumped off back on Craigslist. I feel like Craigslist was, like, my resource for everything. <laughs> um, and I was like, I need to find a job. I ended up getting a part-time job in an accounting firm again. Wow. Um, for this guy, at the time when I was working in the San Francisco area, I lived in a place called Mill Valley, which is in Marin, just across the Golden Gate Bridge from San Francisco. Okay. So this guy that I found on Craigslist owned this accounting firm in Mill Valley, right next to my house. Ironically, I ended up finding out he actually lived two doors down from me. Like His actual house was two doors down from my house, which I later found out after I got this accounting job. But when I interviewed for him, I told him what I was doing. Really cool guy. He's a CPA, owned his own comp- owned his own firm, and he um, was a musician and had been trying to be a musician and was still working as a musician. Had a band, was still recording. So when I kind of told him what I was doing, I was honest. I'm like, I'm trying to be an actor. And he's like, Oh, cool. That's awesome. You can work here. And because my dad was an accountant, and I'd worked in my dad's office. I'd had a lot of accounting experience and office experience. So he just wanted me in there because I could kind of help manage the office and do tax returns and work with people and handle clients and just kind of run everything if that made sense yes. and he gave me the freedom to leave whenever I needed to for auditioning so it was great perfect yeah so I was crushing that accounting job going to auditions trying to be an actor after doing that for I think three years I ended up realizing I needed to move to LA I was going to be serious just because the work up there with the independent films and whatnot is great sort of but it's just not at the same caliber as it is down here yeah sure. and like even when i would get the rare la audition the reel that i had um and the work that i had to show as a reel just wasn't as at the same caliber as stuff down here you know what i mean a lot of casting directors would tell me like you know what you the work you're doing is great but i think they're being nice it wasn't really that great but they'd be like you know it's just <laughs> it's just not good enough to show off what you can do it just doesn't look professional you need to get down to la and do some la auditioning some la work etc so i moved down here to los angeles um, I met, this is tied to you, actually, so I met, I had a friend who had another friend who had another friend who had worked as a, a background extra on Days of Our Lives. So he was like, hey, I could tell my friend who could tell his friend <laughs> that he could send <laughs> oh your info God. to the casting director of this soap opera if you're down for background work. And I was like, you know, at the time, it just happened, right when I moved down, I was like, yeah, sure, okay. Then I, and then I got a message the next day. The guy's like, hey, yeah, send me your stuff. I'm going to send it to the casting director. I was like, oh, okay. Right. So I sent it to him. And the next day after that, the casting director, which is Bob, hit me up. And was like, hey, do you want me on the show tomorrow? I was like, yeah, that'd be great. So oh, literally, it was like that fast. That's awesome. And, this, and then and this was when? This was what year did this This was start? like, um, this would have been like, I don't know, three years ago, I think, when I got started working on Days of Our Lives, three and a half years ago. Yeah. Really? So, yeah. Dude, that is so crazy how that works like that. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, yeah. So right when I moved down to LA, I realized, again, I needed a job. So the job I took right away and got was I started working as a VP or vice president of operations for an outdoor luxury furniture company. They sell all of like the, if you go to a Marriott or a Hilton, I mean, not all of the Marriott and Hiltons, but a number of Marriott and Hiltons, all the outdoor furniture, the nice patio furniture you would see they would supply it from overseas. So I was their operations manager handling production overseas, like in Indonesia and in the Philippines, and then handling the shipping over to America. And then once it was in America, getting it to the client, which ended up being a disaster and way more work <laughs> than I want to deal with. So I did that for a short time, but it just took so much time, I had no time to audition. So when this opportunity to start working on Days of Our Lives kind of came about, um, I ended up quitting that job and jumping into that uh, and trying to get more work full time. And, and basically living off the savings that I had. And so, to tie this back in, when I moved down, when that was happening, still doing, still working out, still doing fitness, 
having moved to LA, seeing all the functional fitness that happens here, specifically in Santa Monica and at Venice Beach, I would see people training and working out, doing flips, just doing weird fitness I'd never even seen before. Like just like the stuff I do now, but back then I was like, what is this? Like seeing people running and flipping and on pull-up bars doing wow. tricks and on the ground yeah. doing tricks. And you had never done that ever. Never done it, never seen it. I didn't know what it was. I was like, what's going, what is this? Like, so I just remember- Just three and a half years ago. Yeah, three and a half years ago. <laughs> like maybe, maybe four years ago now. Yeah, three, think about Wow. Three, yeah. yeah, seeing it, I was like, what is that? It's just, this is amazing. So, and when I moved out, I didn't even have Instagram at all. Cause keep in mind, Instagram came out what, six years ago? So yeah. I didn't even, didn't even have it. And Dude, so, I didn't even get, like when did you get your Instagram? A couple years ago. I remember I had one and had one like awkward photo on there and then I never <laughs> built it. Yeah. I think I started like kind of posting in 2015, 2016, yeah. but yeah. you're right. Instagram's been out only I think six years. Six years. Yeah. So I didn't even have it. And so when I would go talk to people, I remember I literally would ask them like, Hey, like, what are you doing? What is this? Like, how do I do this? And so the first thing I learned was a muscle up, which is where you're holding a pull up bar, basically pull yourself on top of the bar. I remember learning that, um, kind of on my own, um, I'd seen people do it, I'd seen it on YouTube, and I was just trying it, I figured it out. I was like, wow, I can muscle up, I'm so sick. I'm like, I, thought, I thought I was so awesome, seriously. I was like, yeah. I'm gonna go down to those pull-up bars, where everybody is, and just do a muscle up and look dope. And I remember going, thinking I was gonna go down there and look awesome, so I went to go down there to do it. And then I see people like doing muscle ups and doing backflips off the bar, and I'm like, what is this? Like, <laughs> this is way cooler than what I'm doing. So then I started talking to people and asking questions, you know, how do I do this, how do I do that? Where do I learn a backflip? And at the time, they told me I should go to a place called Tempest, which is like a free running slash gymnastics gym. Mm -hmm. So I remember going to Tempest and same thing, walking in there and going to people like, hey, can you teach me how to backflip? And people were like, sure. And they kind of just teach you. And I would learn one thing to the next. All while people were like, oh, like, what's your Instagram? Let's stay in touch. And I'm like, huh. I don't even have Instagram. I'm like, oh, we should start one just to stay in touch with people. And I was like, oh, okay. Same thing. Opened an Instagram just like you did posted some random weird picture just to have something in there. <laughs> and I would just get people's Instagram just so, just so we could talk because everybody kind of used to communicate and message back and forth. And then all while this was happening, I was uh, I started basically posting my progress. So if I learned like a backflip, I remember it's on my Instagram still, I posted my first backflip on there. I was wow. like, learn to backflip today, you know? Wow. Or I think I learned like my first bar trick, like which was, which was a 360. And so I put my first 360 and I was like, oh, my first 360. So I kept kind of posting what I was doing yeah. and people were following that. People love a journey. Yes, yeah, yeah, cool. they were just, I was getting followers from it. At the time, not, I wasn't really thinking much of it, and I started meeting other people that were doing it. And then I started seeing people that had a lot of followers. And like these people were working with brands, they were going to fitness expos and doing all these things. And I was like, wow, like what is this all about? And then I started learning that brands were paying people to like do things. And as I was growing and learning all of these things and meeting new people, I was kind of I kind of realized it was a whole business, you know what I mean? Which I know very well now. But back then, I was like, "This is so cool! Like, what is this? what is this fitness? <laughs> yeah. What is this whole fitness world getting paid to do social media thing?" You know? And I kind of realized what it was, and then eventually realized that if I kind of kept posting and really kind of focused on it and really put time into it, I could probably make money from it. Which is what ended up happening. I ended up um, really trying to, you know put out, for example, good pictures and good videos and see if it would make my Instagram grow more, which it did. But then what I also really realized is that I actually, and this ties back to the whole thing about movies, is that what I really like doing, and I still do it, is the whole process of making an edited, cool fitness video. It's something I really enjoy because it's like I'm making a mini movie. Mm -hmm. You know, from yeah. the moment of like me thinking like, what am I gonna do in this gym, for example? Like, oh, I'm gonna go run right there. Then I'm gonna flip off that and I'm gonna back off that. That'll be cool. Okay. Then how am I gonna film this to make it look cool? Then I'm like, you know, so then I'm filming it cinematically to make it look. Instead of just sitting there with the camera and like just right. going like this, I'm like, you know, getting Doing cool it, angles. Yeah. I'm getting cut from here to cut to there. And then, then you I'm, put music. Then I get music it. and I'm like, all right, let me get some, Dude, what song is gonna make this is sick? sick. The so, oh, I appreciate it. So it turns into like a whole production though, yeah. and that's really the part that I, I realized that's what I really enjoy is the video slash movie portion cool. of it. And like, I was talking to Demi actually like yesterday about it when she asked me like what I really wanted to do. And like, I've always known this. I feel like I've always wanted to do action movies. And I feel like the fitness thing I'm doing is almost like making little, I know it's fitness, so it's not action movies, but it's like mini action videos. Yeah. That's almost what I'm making. I really just, I just enjoy doing that. I love making little videos. Like I make them for my friends. I'll like, you know, like I have, my roommate does um, basically the same thing that I do. I'll like, I'll like run to his room sometimes. I'm like, Ryan. I have the best idea for you. Here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go here, you're gonna wear this, you're gonna jump off that, flip here to this song. And he's like, that's a really good idea. And like, just cause- And you just make- your I just can't help it, it just happens. Like yeah. I just I just enjoy that process, you know what I mean? I just think, dude, we're at such a level and that's why I wanna keep building everything that we're doing because, you know, even, because when I moved out here to act in 
you know, 2006. Mm-hmm. It was like old school before social media, old school. But it, yeah, it was. No, it was. Yeah, I know like, what you mean. Yeah, like, paper, like paper headshots. Yeah. yeah. Now when you give somebody a paper, when they request a headshot, I'm like, are you serious? You want me to give you a paper headshot? <laughs> like, what are you going to do with that? Like, sorry. I just think it's hilarious. It's like, yeah, there's no need for it anymore. Yeah. I remember my, the biggest trick was like sending, sending out headshots, out, yes. but having a clear envelope in the front. Yes, yeah, so, so they can you, see your face. Yeah. That's so true. And I getting a manager that. and agent and, um, but there, like we, we talked about this before we started recording is just like, there's just so much red tape and obviously, I mean, that's the business still, but right. I think there's going to be bigger opportunities through Instagram and YouTube and Facebook and whatever other platforms come along that we can actually just continue to create yep. our own stuff. Yeah. Like this whole setup would have probably costed $20,000. Oh yeah. yeah. But like, how would you ever dis- you distribute couldn't. it? Yeah. That, we'd, I'd have to like go and pitch it. And now we just let the audience decide if they yeah, like it they watch it to. without yeah. having to do you want to buy this and we get to pitch you them and like up. you just put it up so Crazy. dude I, that's like that's incredible yeah so um I feel like my I'm sorry to you guys I feel like my story was kind of all over the place no, and basically yeah it. so I was doing accounting realized I didn't want to do it I'd always worked out moved out here to be an actor I love I just love film I want to be you know, I want to be an action movie that's what I want to do Hell yeah. And then, um, yeah, the fitness thing kind of just took off. And I've been riding, I've been doing that ever since. And so in working in fitness, which I love and will always continue to do, like no matter what, I love training. I love just being fit and seeing what my body's capable of. And the fact that I can make movies and work from that is great, you know. And so I always knew I could develop this, keep working on this. And then I also thought that at some point it may help me in the acting realm as well because I might meet more people yeah. or, you know, create something that maybe some casting director will see or you know who knows or maybe know. like you were saying maybe i'll just create my own film and then post it on my instagram and be like go watch this film it's awesome yeah you know heck yeah it. so well okay yeah. so everything you're doing you mm-hmm. obviously are very disciplined in order to make all of this happen what is your morning schedule like your schedule in general how much or how often do you work out because it takes a very disciplined person <laughs> to do what you do and i'm so curious um I would say I am disciplined, but it's only because it's what I like to do. So to answer your question directly, I work out pretty much every day. Um, the only days I'll take off or are if, let's say, I have a work day where I'm either on set working, you know, acting or a shoot day where I'm on there all day and I just know I'm going to be exhausted, I might take that day off. Sure. So in thinking that I'm going to be working out every day, there's always that odd day that's so busy or so long, just you're not, I'm not going to have time to work out or if I did, it'd be really early or really late, so I'll just take that day off. So it usually works out where I work out six days a week. Okay. Um, how do I how do I stay disciplined? It's just, it's my work. Like, realistically, my job now is to be fit sure. and to create fitness content for the most part. Yeah. So it's what I like to do. So and You were I just in men's the... health, weren't you? Yeah. Have you been there a couple times? Or is that uh, like... a couple, I've been there a couple times. To be totally upfront, though, this previous, the time they just posted me, um... When you work with magazines, um, or really anybody, uh, as you know, when you sign that contract for your image rights, you know, or for the fo- for the footage they take, whatever shoot that is, it's pretty much theirs. So in this men's health issue, it was some other guy's article. It's really funny. We were laughing about it. It says like, uh, it's like talking about some forty-one-year-old. I'm not, and I'm not bashing this. It's great, but it's just ironic and funny. It's like talk, It's like some four. It was an, an uh, um, sorry. It was an author who says he's forty-one years old, feeling great. Still running, still doing all these great things, and basically they made it seem like the pictures of the author was the pictures are me, but the author is somebody else. So when you read the ma- magazine, oh, it, it makes it look like the author yeah. was you. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> like, That's me. It's just so oh weird. My gosh. And my name's not even in there. So I was in there visually, but my name wasn't in there. So in this wow. most recent. So once you sign to take those photos, they can use those for yeah. whatever they. And it's fine. Honestly, it was just funny because we were laughing because, it, like I said, the way the article reads, you're like, wow, this guy looks great. Like, but it's not him, it's me. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. And are, are you, like, so with, because I, I think for us, the thing that we've have to, because now that essentially working on days, yes, yeah. I'm a full time employee, but I work like, some people think I'm so busy on the show, and they're like, you probably work so much. I'm like, well, I work like 12 days a month. <laughs> <laughs> Killing it. <laughs> for an average of like six hours each day. It's like the, the dream job of a lifetime. So I have all this free time. And it's pretty awesome on set. And because it's just, I've been there. It's sick. It's sick. <laughs> yeah, it's just so chill. Um, but we have to be disciplined in yes. every other aspect. And now so with chill. all these different avenues, but we, we feel like our morning has, we have to win our morning 
or yes. are days all like screwed up? Like, do, yes. do you have a specific like? Do you wake up to an alarm clock? Do you have like a ritual, or do your are your mornings like 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 what, what's your typical morning? So like? yes, I'm. I have, for me like to get up and be productive. I definitely have to have an alarm clock just to because if I don't, I'll just I just Sleep won't be day. sharp. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. It. So definitely have an alarm. Definitely get up. I'm the, I'm the kind of person who needs to get out of the house. I'm not good hmm. at sitting in the house because I just will not be productive. So for me, really, I like to get up, shower, and just go. Like go to Starbucks, get a coffee, go to the gym, like get it going. Get just get nice. out of the house. Yeah, actually nice. get out of the house. And it'll, it'll keep me productive all day. So I'm just the kind of person, some people can chill and have a ritual. And I think I was reading, some guy likes to have like, what do you say, drink, like swish salt water or take seas. I don't even know. Some weird thing. I got to go. I got to get yeah. up and go. Yeah. I can't sit around. And like, or some that. people meditate, which is great. I got to go. So I basically literally get up, shower, out of the house. But everyone's different. So that's what's yeah. so interesting to hear though. Yeah. Because I feel like we just kind of hang out here all day. It works if it's, I mean, it works if it's, if it's, productive, if it's like, if I'm, a, if I'm working on the show, like I obviously have to get up and get out of the house. Yeah. And like for us though, it's like, I feel like we do a lot of work at home, but there are times that we'll, like we went to breakfast and we were working the other day and we're like, why aren't we, we out live in Los often. Angeles. Like, why yeah. aren't we in these amazing places? Like we're yeah. actually get, get confined sometimes in the house. So I actually want to try that though. It's like, just get like up get, get up out. and go. Um, I'll even take my laptop to like Starbucks just to yeah. just to get a coffee and just to get in that environment of okay I'm not at home I can't like relax on the couch and take my time I'm like in kind of a semi awkward space because it's public so you know it makes in me kind zone. of just focus on what I have to go do stuff and, yeah and do you do all your own um, like editing like on the videos and music like do you have any like team or someone that helps you at all like everything? currently for the most part I do all my own editing at the wow. moment um, but again that is just Instagram which is a lot shorter videos easier to edit um, YouTube videos you know which can be anywhere from 10 to you know 20 minutes or a lot yeah. harder and I just really haven't dabbled too much into YouTube which I need to do and when I do I'm probably gonna have somebody else filming it and somebody else editing it just because it does yeah. take mm -hmm. a lot of time it does Dude, yeah. we when we started, if, if I mean, we want to get it to the point where we're doing like three vlogs like yeah. a week, but we've been yeah. doing like a vlog. I just feel like with your following and all the cool shit you're doing like all the time, if you had someone just follow you around and that's shoot and edit amazing. you, dude, that's my goal. And I think and thank you. And I that's what I want to do. I just need it because really, it just turns into one of those things where there's so many platforms. Well, I guess there's not too many platforms, but between Instagram and YouTube, a you. An Instagram video is just, the nature of it is different than a YouTube video, for the most part. Like an Instagram video hits hard, it's kind of entertainment based, it's mm -hmm. usually short and just in your face, whereas a YouTube video can be a lot of things. You know, it can be longer, there can be more detail. A lot of people will go to a YouTube video to learn something or to watch something. So the point is they're opening it up to sit there and like yeah. watch something. Instagram, yeah. they're just scrolling, it's gotta be like instant. Gotta you know, catch instant it, yeah. enter entertainment. The point case, being yeah. though is, yeah, and so when I'm going to shoot one of those, it's for me it's just hard to go shoot an Instagram video and YouTube slash vlog it at the same time, unless I have somebody else filming, which, which yes. I'm gonna need, because it's just but you can, dude. You can find yeah. like we have a we have a, our, our great friend. Funny enough, about Craigslist. Um, <laughs> Craigslist just cute. Are we just selling <laughs> Craigslist right now? We're just marketing. <laughs> we need to call Craigslist. Be like, you want to sponsor by Craigslist? www.craigslist.com. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. But we just put out like looking for an uh, an intern at the time, and we got like a bunch of people who were gonna like film it. You know we wanted for free um just to see if there was like an equal value that we could do if we yeah. tag them and all that kind of stuff um then we were like we don't have the time to do this at the moment well then when we wanted to actually start doing it we we're like well who are our two favorite people there was like two people we wrote down and the yeah. one dude that we wrote his name's brian and we're like do you want to come shoot some stuff and like he's the coolest guy and he comes and shoots like like all of our stuff Every so free? i eventually not for free oh, okay. no, no, like, <laughs> no 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 give me this give i want to know Who's no we initially but talking? i think but I, but I also think with what you're doing, there could mm -hmm. be someone who's 23, 22, yeah. film school, mm -hmm. who would come and do three times a week for free for six hours with you if, like, you just, like, at that yeah. person. Yeah, tag and do my stuff. He's, yeah. you know, maybe. That could be a yeah. great exchange. Like, how if I was... How often a week that. do you shoot? How often? Yeah. Oh, five days? Almost, every, almost really? every day. Almost every day. Wow. Just because either it'll be planned or we'll, I'll be somewhere and I'll just have an idea and I gotta shoot right there. And plus a lot of the great um, social media stuff is really in the moment. You know, there's a lot mm -hmm. of live things that happen and I'll be somewhere where something funny's happening or I see something cool or you'll see somebody who that you know, I'm like, hey, we should shoot this right now. You know, and with the iPhone, you can just film everything in, in the moment, mm -hmm. you know, so. Almost every day. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's really good. What else did I see earlier? You were doing, are you doing a, a, an app? Yeah, so, 
I've been wanting to release a fitness app for a while and just did a lot of research trying to figure out if I should hire an app company to do it, how much that would cost, what the best avenue it's expensive, is. Isn't it's it? really expensive. Mm-hmm. I remember calling one day. We had a uh, we were working in a business. I was like, we need an app so that we can send push notifications and like it was just so thing. expensive. And I, call yeah. a, I think the starting price was like twenty grand. Yeah, I was about to say it's literally twenty to thirty thousand yeah. dollars for a good like, legitimate app. Like, yeah. Like, no. yeah, I'm like, oh, we'll, we'll figure it out. Same. No so I was like, that's not going to happen. And there's a lot of companies that will do a revenue share, so they'll take a certain percentage to work with you. And there's just varying degrees of revenue share taken versus services provided. And the company that I'm going to work with um, the way it works with them is they just handle a lot of the um, back-end work for me so I don't have to manage too much aside from creating the actual workout and then showing up on set to film it so it was just for me like kind of like you were saying having a team behind you just makes things easier sure. and they're that kind of company where they're teaming up with me doing a lot of the work so I can really focus on the actual workout showing up filming it you know and then pushing it um, to people that follow me to say you know here's the work that I'm doing here's the app jump on there check it out so, so yeah. it's it's in the process. In the process, we shot it already. Um, so you come, shot like the workouts. Yeah, film the workouts. It should be out in the next month. Okay. It's on, and it's and on is the, that going to be a? Oh, what were we saying? I'll say it's on the Fit Plan app. So it's a really cool app. They uh, do a bunch of apps for a bunch of great people. And if you go to like the Fit Plan app, there'll be my app in there. So okay. okay. Yeah. And is that going to be like? Um, like, uh, is, do they, is it a free app that you can like upgrade for extra stuff, or is it like it's going to be the app? The app, it, the app downloads free, and it's basically like a monthly thing. I think it's like six dollars a month, five ninety nine oh, a month, and it awesome. has all of the workouts. Basically, has everything, everything involved in the workout that I do currently, and shows you in date. You know, it shows my, it shows you how to do the workouts every day, and has me, you know, on video doing the workout, doing the set, showing you the form, talking to you like doing everything it's pretty I need cool that. that's awesome. it's pretty that's, that's why i chose them it's very legit shot very professionally looks great lighting's awesome just get, and i went through every single exercise showing you how to do it so it's cool Amazing. that's great yeah. i'll check that out yeah. should be cool it's gonna be a, it's, a, it's the first time i've actually done because i've done workouts prior with different companies via youtube but this particular workout is the first time where i told them like this is my workout this is how i want to do it i want this done and they're like cool so it's literally my workout Amazing. Like, not, it's not like some fake like thing. Like, oh, do this. It's a great workout. Like, it's what actually, actually what I do. <laughs> this is legit what I do. No joke. Well, so, so what about diet? What's your diet like? Diet is everything. Okay. Serious <laughs> answer to that question. Diet is everything. Like, fitness is diet. Hmm. Serious. And um, I joke about this, too, with her all the time. But, like, to break it down easily, there's, there's eating what I would call healthy and then eating what I would call, like, shreddy. Two different things. Hmm. Because the average person, if you said, oh, what's eating healthy to you? They'll say, oh, um, you know, eating wheat bread, eating fruit, um, having yogurt. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, they'll yeah, go through this yeah. list of things yeah. that, oh, what'd you have for lunch? Oh, I had a, I had a sandwich from Subway. Really healthy, just, you know, just a sandwich on bread, just <laughs> you know, lettuce and, and turkey. It was, it didn't have the cookies and um, had diet soda, you know? And then at nighttime, <laughs> what'd, you have, what'd you have for dinner? Oh, it was great. I just had potatoes and steak. So that, that is technically healthy. Technically speaking, that is healthy. You know, having yogurt, that's healthy. But eating healthy doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be fit looking or you're not, not going to look fit, not going to look aesthetically pleasing. Right. Two different things. So um, diet for me is like I basically follow a lower carb diet. Not to say it's the only way to look fit or healthy, but for me it's the easiest way to look mm-hmm. fit and healthy on a daily basis. That's when I, um, anytime I like get up there and I wait a little bit, I'm like, mm-hmm. I need to cut. Mm-hmm. I just like go straight keto, keto yeah. mm-hmm. and just, dude, you can lose. Cause I initially will lose like five or six pounds the first week mm-hmm. and then two to three, like probably two pounds every week guaranteed. It just falls off. Yeah. Yeah. That's and essentially what so... I fall, like my own kind of version of keto. But yeah. Yeah. It's so... so do you do that though? Some days a week or do you have a cheat day? I go six days low carb for the most part and I'll okay. have one cheat day where I'll usually like from like late afternoon on just have whatever I want and as much of it as I want what's your favorite cheat meal <laughs> it's a close call between like pizza McDonald's and ice cream and donuts and cereal and candy and uh, all those I usually I feel typically you. like I'll usually have like either typically it's either pizza or McDonald's I don't know why those are my t- yeah no, the two I, I typically go, go to <laughs> And then I usually like I'll like I'll usually get try to like I'll go to Safeway first or you know Safeway I'll go to Vons first get like ice cream and candy and cereal and milk and then I might stop by the donut shop get some donuts then I go to like McDonald's to get my McDonald's and I go home and I put you know the ice cream in the freezer the cereal on the shelf and the milk in the fridge and the candy down eat the McDonald's then I grab the ice cream then I grab the cereal <laughs> then I grab the candy and, and I just, done I eat, done and I just done. eat it all dude if I yeah. had if I had one 
wish. It yeah. would not be to fly or to have a billion dollars. <laughs> it would be to just always be six, seven percent body fat and eat whatever I've I want. I've never heard someone say that. That's an awesome thing. So you can eat whatever you want and be totally shreddy. Yeah. yeah. That's a really good wish. That I is never... the hardest thing you ever like you can it's actually so create financial passive residual. Like you could like there's a lot of things you can achieve in life where you can back off with like fitness and health. You can't like ever. I always have to eat egg whites to the day I die. So that's not true. You just gotta eat you can eat regular eggs. Or I do eat regular yeah, yeah, eggs. Saying, yeah. But uh, you know what I mean. Yeah, like, no, you're saying yeah, you got to eat like low carb the day you die. You do. If you want to have a six pack, <laughs> you do. There's no way around it. It sucks. I totally agree. Until they figure something out. Yeah. So it's going to be. actually true. I thought there's some, there's a way you could like block your like, sh- I thought like they could make a pill that would control your blood sugar levels that would keep you shreddy hmm. actually to be honest. I feel like that you could take a pill that would control your sugar, sp- your insulin spikes or manage your insulin spikes. Because that's what basically is... Or if you guess, I guess if you took insulin, it's actually probably possible. They just don't really advertise it now that I think to about it. To be able it. to do that. You Ooh. probably could do it to a degree. It would not be healthy at all, but it would work. <laughs> it would work. It just wouldn't <laughs> be healthy. You'd die at 42, yeah. but you would look great. Yeah, you'd be dead like in a week, but you'd be so shit. <laughs> <laughs> Bury me oh, open cast a shirt off. <laughs> oh my God, Too dude. Good. Well, okay, so obviously you're shooting content all the time, yeah. working out all the time. Do you ever get injuries? Good question. People ask that all the time. You can't throw that out there. Knock on wood. No, it's fine. It's, no, I mean, oh it's, it's a good question. No, it happens. So little ones, nothing major. I feel like we, with the type of training that I do, there's so much failing slash crashing that happens. You just get really good at crashing. And that sounds really weird. Like there's okay. times I'm all like about to fall on my face. Like I had one last week. I was trying to do this front flip. I was basically running off of my friend, jumping off of him and front flipping. And it's just really weird because st- you're front flipping off of a human, which is not the sturdiest surface. Yeah. So as I went to kind of throw this front flip, he flinched. So I'm like in the air like, oh my God, going face down. But you just, you're so used to rolling out of yeah. it. I was totally fine. It was funny. But um, no, not too often. Little injuries, That's like even that though. same training last week. Um, I just did too many flips and the bottom of my feet are just, were just kind of bruised. Yeah. So I'll get like little bruises or little ankle sprains or a pull here, a pull there. But nothing like, nothing too bad, honestly. Just manage and it. how long yeah. did it take you to learn to do front flips, back flips, all of that? I think the back flips took like a month. Wow. To be comfortable, then you kind of have to constantly practice to kind of keep it yeah. good because it's kind of a, going over your head backwards never really gets too comfortable you kind of always think about it yeah. but yeah flips honestly there's a lot of fear in flips and once you kind of manage mm-hmm. that fear it's not too bad so it's, it, is it exactly what you think it was it's just getting your mind right yeah literally like it's just technique like backflipping is not necessarily hard it's just the hardest thing is letting go of that fear of crashing on your crack. neck <laughs> yeah it's not an actual it's not an actually hard thing to do you just throw your arms up and jump basically you're really just you're really just jumping pool. up and then just it, are, are, are you like when someone teaches you do they say just like go break your neck or does no. someone help you the like, best way to learn it, it? the you. helping of the flip works in my opinion when somebody uh, spots you and flips you around for me it never worked because when someone does that they're basically flipping you hmm. and you gotta, whereas yeah. you need to eventually want to flip yourself so that technique didn't work for me but like what worked well for me was going to a gymnastics gym where they have like a foam pit for example yeah. and you're basically jumping backwards into that foam pit and feeling safe and once that feels safe, you start actually doing a flip into the foam pit because you feel safe. Then eventually you'll put a kind of a pad in there, like a stiffer pad. So you start kind of landing on the pad, which again, still feels safe. And once you can comfortably go off that pad and land on the pad on your feet, you're like, wow, oh, I can pretty much do this flip. Then you move to like a gymnastics bouncy floor, which is still not as hard as the ground. Yeah. I mean, when you land on it wrong, you definitely feel it, but it's not too bad. Get comfortable there, which is again, somewhat safe. Then once you've got it there on that bouncy floor, take it outside. Again, the grass, which is not... Which is still right. dangerous, but not, it's not like concrete. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you're basically kind of like just slowly working your way up. Some people are just beasts and they can just throw it on whatever and don't get. I'm not one of those people. I need that slow kind of like process to feel yeah. comfortable. To so. do that. That's crazy. Um, yeah. And then just real quick to bounce back to the yeah, diet thing. Um, what is your opinion? Like, are, are you in, like, I don't know if you're watching like the, the Netflix documentaries or not, how there's people who are basically mm-hmm. like, you got to be vegan; it can cure disease, or yes. keto will cure cure disease. Okay. Red meat kills Washed you. Washed and read a car, number of like, those. What is your like? Like, was we obviously what works for us, and I think it would work for a lot of people. Probably not everybody, especially obviously people who are, who are vegan aren't going to do the meat and low yeah. carb thing. Yeah. But that is what works for me. Like I've done meal prepping, mm-hmm. and I do a little rice, a little this, a little Same. that. But I'm also friggin' starving, <laughs> and I, I can't like I need to know that I can sit down and eat 
like a salad this big, not like my portion. So like I've Same. done it all. So, um, but then when it comes to the health thing, like what is your opinion or things that you've researched or about um, people who are doing vegan for the health reason um, more than, you know, the like or vegan keto, like all these different diets. Like what do you, what do you think? So I've watched and read a number of, I've watched a number of documentaries, read a number of books, seen a bunch of articles, read those articles and just heard so many theories and concepts on and and just different types of dieting and what diet's right, what diet's wrong, what diet's healthy, what diet's gonna make you live long. There's just so many conflicting opinions on different ways to eat and what you should eat and what you shouldn't eat. And so I think the the way that I look at it, or when people ask me about diet, is what are your serious goals here? Like, are you approaching you know older age, like 60, where you're really thinking like, you know, my body is starting to kind of break down, I can feel it in my joints, I just need to start eating healthy, or I need to feel healthy. Um, you know, I would approach diet differently for somebody like that. And that really, I think the focus is eating, you know, um, organic greens and like fruits and naturally occurring things. You know, like I would try to get, you know, farm raised chicken and, you know, I would, again, steer them probably towards something lower carb just because I know that would keep you lean. But my focus would more so be a healthy diet. And again, that I'm focusing on fruit, which has sugar, it's not low carb. But they need those vitamins from that fruit. They're older, yeah. you know, and I don't mean that in a negative way. When somebody who's, you know, you know, at a younger age, let's say they're 25, you know, 25 to 35, and they're overweight, and they're thinking, you know, I want to just, I want to look great, I want to have a six pack for the summer. Then, you know, I would, I would direct them in a different way and say, you know, I don't think you should have fruit. Fruit is healthy and it's good for you. I'm not saying it's not, but it has sugar in it. And if you want to lose weight quickly, I'm just being totally honest, and you want to get lean. Eating vegetables and meat is going to make you lean and shreddy. It just is the way it is. I'm yeah. not saying it's healthy, but it's going to work for the look that you want. So again, it really depends on what your goals are. Are you trying to be like? Are you just you just want to get you want to be aesthetic? You want to look great? You don't care about anything else? Eat meat and vegetables. If you're caring more, you know, if you're thinking, well, I want to be lean, but I want to be healthy, then I would steer you towards a lower carb based diet, but maybe have some fruit in the morning. Make sure you're taking your multivitamins. Um, you know, like stay away from processed food. You know, there's a number of ways to go about it. So to answer your question, I mean, were you asking me what diet's the best or like what specific are you asking me? I just like, I just feel like it's, it's so interesting to me that, and I think maybe it's more of a marketing thing. I don't know, like I don't yeah. know enough about it, but I was just seeing from your point of view of like, I literally have watched like two documentaries yeah. Same. that they're like, they contradict meat one will another. like make you live forever keto and vegan will make you live forever oh, like it's yes. so interesting that they literally were showing like the diet like diabetes and like all these different things but one is literally saying you can't eat meat in the health wise and then one's saying like you know oh so yeah so, so i so to answer that i agree there's so many conflicting opinions on what to eat and what you shouldn't eat and i think it's just i'm just being honest, like it's all crap i just don't i don't listen to any of it i don't believe any of it like i from what I've tried, what I've experienced, eating meat and vegetables makes you lean and shreddy, and it always works. So that's why I always recommend. Hmm. And as far as being vegan, do I think what I do I think you should be vegan? No, it doesn't. I've tried it. I've tried eating vegetarian and vegan, and it just doesn't work. I think for me, I need meat to stay like to have bulk. Mm -hmm. If you think that's good for you, fine. I don't agree with it. I don't think red meat's gonna hurt you. I think red meat's fine. We've eaten it forever. Humans have eaten it forever, and so. I just yeah, there's just so much conflicting information. I don't believe it's any so of it. Hard. Yeah. And We've, then even and then even with the opinions on oh you have to buy like organic fruit for example, you can't get regular fruit. You gotta get organic fruit because regular fruit has like pesticides. Well, organic stuff has like there's, they do weird stuff to organic fruit too. So like when I go to the store, I'll just buy whatever apples are on sale. I don't care if they're organic. <laughs> or not. I don't care. You know, I'm just being honest. Like there's just unless you are unless you unless you own your own farm in your backyard and you're raising your own chickens and and they're having their own eggs and you're growing your own fruit and vegetables then i just don't believe in i just there's no way to confirm that all that stuff is perfectly sure. raised with no chemicals you know what i mean so it's, it's just i just at this point it's i'm just being honest at this point i just don't believe any of it so i go to the store i buy what's on sale and, I, you, can I, kind of, and yeah. you can kind of go by what, like what makes you feel good like yeah, we, i was ve i went yeah. vegan for 17 days and i was like and I was like, I just want to try it you know i don't want to be able yeah. to try and for me i feel like i get puffy on carbs so do I. It just, it, it's it's a, you know, for me, so it just didn't work. I know for some people who do it for the reason because of like with animals and like, they, yes. like I, I respect that, I get that. Same. But when it comes to the, for, for me, it's just, and, and that's the, for everyone listening too, I mean like 
obviously he's shreddy. Um, <laughs> I, I'm um, pretty average, but it, like I'm, but I've got, I've done this ups and downs in, in like the meat and veggies. And it's just that misconception that people are like, oh, the wheat bread and all this. It's like, like you said, the subway, like that's not healthy really. Yeah. It's not going to make you lean. And again, it's every, yeah. and another thing to think about too is honestly, every body is different. Like nobody's going to react the same way to diet. Nobody's going to react the same way to training. So it's, it is really about understanding what your goal is and then trying different things to see what works for you. And that's something I always tell people. Like I, even when I recommend a workout or diet, like this is what I think works and what works well for me. Try this and see how it feels. Like that's the key point yeah. with diet and training is how things are feeling. If you're not understanding what's going on with your body, it's going to be really hard to make your body do what you want it to do. You know what I mean? And that comes from diet, training, to learning a backflip. It's all about feeling. Mm-hmm. If you can't feel that, if you can't feel a higher going before you're back tucking and landing, you're going to crash because you can't feel it. And that yeah. comes with diet. You got to, like, just like you said, when you were trying vegan, it didn't feel good. That's key. Yeah. It doesn't work for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've, yeah. Feeling is everything. Back in what, October, November, we both did keto and I never felt better ever in my life. Just so much energy, felt really good. Granted, he's more following it now than I am. <laughs> sorry, not I sorry. I have to. Well, it's hard because you can't have it's, like ice cream. You can't have bread. It's, that sucks. <laughs> I hate, I love bread. Bread with butter. Oh my God. Or pasta with butter. Oh my God. It's so good. The Pizza. Best. Oh my gosh. I yeah. know. That's the, that's the tough. I mean, I would be concerned if I wasn't <laughs> like on a television show at this stage in my life. <laughs> Because it's the only thing that keeps me from being like, I mean, oh, I'm, man. I'm, I feel great. Like anytime I go, like, like when we were home, like your mom was like, oh my God, you look like a mate. I'm like, I know I'm thin, but with what we do for a living, yeah, it's, you got to really be there. And Instagram, like yeah, I know that I could you. probably build a bigger following in a, and with fitness, if I were to build even a 10th of what you have. <laughs> But I could get, imagine like posting those, like I know people would like that. Yeah. You know, and it's like, that's it, it's very just dedicated the work commitment. I mean, for me, it's my job too. And I know totally. I have to post pictures and shoot videos. And it also keeps me, it keeps me more on track, I think as well. Knowing that like, oh, tomorrow I'm going to be filming this. I got to stay. Yeah. I can't, I can't cheat today. You yeah. Know? And you have so. to know the, um, well, we got about 12 minutes left. Um, cool. This goes always very fast. We've only been doing this by. for an hour, flies right? Flies um, but I have I, a quick question real fast. Fire away. Okay. Let me have it. Five year end goal or plan, like your dream end goal of five years, where would you be? What would you be doing? Five years from now. Uh-huh. So five years from now, um, my app will be out in the next month, obviously. I want to have that going. I want to have, there's a few different workouts. Like I have one workout that's coming out. I want to have all my workouts eventually on this app people can be doing. Um, I've been working, I own an apparel brand called Bar Strength that I've been working on for a while. I kind of had it on pause while I was working on my social media just because I was managing too many things at one time. So I want to have my apparel brand up and running so people can be learning to train, wearing gear if they want. And then um, really now, because I'm going to have more time, I really want to like, kind of circle back to acting more and try to get back into that realm. And really, like I said, I really want to I want to be, like my end goal, I want to be in an action film. That's what I want to do. Okay. I went and saw Deadpool 2 last night, like looked awesome. And I'm watching these guys that look awesome and are fit, but they're having stunt doubles jump in there. And I'm hmm. like, I want to be that guy, but I don't want the stunt double. I just want to be cool. doing everything. Because I can do that. You know, like That's I want to do the acting. And then when the guy flips, I can do the flip. Like, I want to yep. do that, you know? I love that, I can dude. see you doing that's that. That's what I want to do. I know it sounds crazy, probably in a ridiculous it, goal. Not at all. That's no. what I'm, I want to do. Dude, we we have like we have such ridiculous goals that sometimes it feels funny like Got sharing them. Got it. I, like I have zero yeah. like ceiling of what I believe we're capable of doing. I agree. I'm a thousand percent behind that. Because think of the shit we've already done, and that right. this is like some people look and go, "Oh my god, you like you're successful at this and that." I'm like, I I feel like I haven't even scratched the surface of I what I want mm-hmm. to do. And, that's exactly. Like um. And it's just gonna be—it's gonna be so great. But I, we should—we should try to figure out like how to collaborate and do so. Because I, yeah. I think if we both want to do the movie thing and shoot, and like I don't know if it's gonna be something like tomorrow, but like at least in the back of our minds in the next year or so, like I want to put together a crew, Sam, and get the capital, get and start our own like production company, but not in the sense that we need to go raise money and then go pitch it to Lionsgate. Figure out like even Vimeo, you can just upload. You can, and mm-hmm. then yeah. charge six dollars yeah. to rent it. Just yeah. like yeah. they would, it's like yeah. ten bucks to rent stuff right. on iTunes. Like you could charge cheaper and do it that way, or 
I was even thinking of starting our uh, separate YouTube page like a that's series. a production value or a production company where there are different, basically our own Hulu mm-hmm. or Netflix, yeah. but on a YouTube page mm-hmm. where we bring in and just we are the ones that go, okay, we're going to green light this web series, we're going to green light this television show, we're going to green light these six movies. And then our production company funds it. They all put them on the YouTube, and then you run advertising and make your money that way. Yeah. It's exactly what we're doing on all these networks. Same thing. It's just like you don't have to deal with the networks. But we just are the networks. Exactly. Like, exactly. That is so awesome. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned oh, that. Like yeah. when I talked to you guys originally, or talked to you originally about this show, and like even talking to Chris on set, just talking to you guys, I was like, wow, these guys are really. I like where their heads are at. I can just tell you guys are of the same mindset. I know we're coming from different fields, but I can just tell the way you guys thought and talked. I was like, yeah. Like it's the happiest I've ever been is when I'm shooting like we shot a web series in 2013 we shot a movie um, in 2015, 2015. Um, the last 27 minutes I didn't care for so we didn't release it <laughs> um, and we had to reshoot and I didn't want we didn't want to do it but it was a good learning experience but it was yeah. like when you can when you can write a script and create and go cool. there yeah. and just be in charge because as an actor you kind of just like show up and you're just like you're just like waiting around like Sam, I want to be so do I hands-on every single thing and um so i think there's something there um but i do want to um pick your brain about instagram of just kind of because we were talking too because i was like i mentioned something about your video or whatever and i was curious what you think of the whole algorithm talk of all the switching of how you kind of think about it because Alyssa used to see your stuff all the time Mm -hmm. and then she's like i haven't seen I haven't seen stuff your stuff in a minute. Forever. The new algorithm changes are extremely difficult to deal with. And I feel like it's a running joke on Instagram because <laughs> it's just Instagram supposedly uh, puts in these new algorithms to show the viewers what they want to see based on what they watch on Instagram. Like if you watch this person's feed or this person's video, they're going to show you that person's feed on the regular, supposedly, or similar videos. Right. You know? I mean, the whole point of the algorithm is to show viewers what they want to be seeing. To but, keep them mm, on Yes, the to, keep, to keep them on the app, right. to keep them on Instagram. But it just doesn't seem to be that way because no one ends up seeing what they want to see. Right. I mean, as far as being a content creator, it makes it, or an influencer, it makes it a lot harder because your stuff just doesn't get seen as often. You know, you're, I think everybody that I talk to, their views are down yeah and um it's just been a lot harder for a lot of people you know a lot of people that had it easy you know could post this picture or that video that would get tons of views or likes it doesn't happen anymore Mm -hmm. so it's just more of a struggle you know and not saying that not making any excuses i'm just saying it just means that influencers or creators like us have to be that much more on it creating um great stuff all the time Mm -hmm. to really continue to grow and to get more views or to reach more people, I shouldn't say views, to, to be, reach more to people. To reach now. more. Yeah, yeah reaching people, reach, yeah. basically reaching people is harder now to answer your question directly. So you really need to work to make sure that your stuff is being seen by a lot of people, so that it's actually seen by more people, if that makes sense. Yeah. Because yeah. if you're, you know, because of these algorithms, if you're not creating something that a lot of people are watching right when it's posted and commenting on it, then it's just gonna die. It's yeah. not gonna be, it's yeah. not gonna be popular. You have to get, people have to watch it all the way through and comment on it to make it go far. If that's not happening, then your video and or post is just going to die. That's crazy. Like, yeah. I won't even post something if I know in the first 10 minutes I can't respond back to comments. Yeah. Because... You need to. You have to if you're not responding, it it's not going to happen. You, yeah. you got to respond to comments. You just need comments. You need engagement. If you're not getting rapid engagement on every post you're making, yeah. your post is going to die. Yeah. It sucks. <laughs> it, you know what, though? <laughs> I, but, I do, but I do like the fact that it might, like, weed out people who... Sure don't want to like work harder or aren't going to take it serious i kind of like that it's a little more difficult in the mm-hmm. sense that it's keeping us on our game of like being honest and like getting there and commenting and all that stuff or are you are we, were you going to say like no, no was, i was <laughs> gonna like, you know, i said that I, well i was actually gonna say i hadn't really thought about it that way it's a very good positive perspective freddie i like that right instead good, of, good perspective instead of bitching about it, it i'm like how, what Way can i do to make like that i like that to reach to the people because i think there's a lot of people who want if, if someone follows yeah. you they want to see your stuff but all, all our followers aren't seeing everything. It's true. But on that same note, and again, just being honest, you can create something amazing and no one even sees it. And you're like, I mean, which is fine. I mean, that yeah. just is what it is. But you're yeah. like, oh, crap. I spent like, you know. Like there's times like you'll make an amazing video and you just know it. You know it for real. It's an amazing video. And it doesn't do well. No one sees it. No one comments on it. And it's not because no one likes it. It's just because the algorithm, for whatever reason. Didn't show it. Did The algorithm just whether you posted at the wrong time or who knows it yeah. just didn't wasn't it just wasn't shown to people like you know what I mean because Instagram decides through this algorithm what gets shown to how many people so you can create something amazing and you just yeah. happen to get yeah 
Because they used to do it chronological, so you yeah, could see it, everyone's stuff. There used to be no algorithm. It was yeah. just like when you posted it, it was stuck in somebody's feed at that time on that day. Yeah. No matter how many other people posted before or after, yours sat right matter. there. Yeah. So it was seen. Yep. Never again. Hmm. Yeah. That's crazy. Oh, Instagram. So naughty of them. <laughs> that's, just, that's just business. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, they're doing the. And like I even switched mine to a business account recently, too. Yeah, and you got I just want to be able to reach. That's all it is. It's like, I just want to like. You can judge my stuff. I'm putting it out there. If you like our podcast and want to subscribe, yeah. do it. If you don't like it, go, you can watch someone else. Yeah. I, I, I get it. Yeah. Exactly. So I've just really focused on this is what I enjoy doing. I love putting something together, cutting it together, Same. putting it out, and I hope a lot of people will see it, and then they can respond if they like it or not, mm. which is which is great. So I've kind of gotten over the whole like looking at who's seeing it at what time. And I that's, just like to and have that's, fun. That's the, and that's honestly the best way to do it, in my opinion. Like, end of the day, what are you going to do? You can't change it. You right. know, we can, we can cry about You can cry about anything all you want. It's not going to change it. So, yeah, it's gotta go that's, with, the, that's yeah. the correct perspective to have. Just create awesome stuff, and what happens, happens. The cards are going to fall where they may. All you can do is be awesome. Amen. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, as we wrap this up, we yeah. always love ending our interviews with a life tip. So is there one life tip that you could give the viewers, listeners? I think I just gave it, and I'll, re- I'll say it again. I just yeah. mean it. You know, life's going to happen, and all you can do is be awesome in the moment. You know? Be mm-hmm. the best you can be. There's nothing else you can do. You know, you can, you can, all you can do is be the best that you can, you know, in, that, very, in any given moment. I love that. And that's what I honestly feel, and I feel like with everything going on in the world, with, <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? Literally, everything going on in the world. There's so many things happening and people get caught up in such small, you know, things that don't really matter in the overall perspective of the world. So all you can do is be the best person you can be and really be the best person you can be to the person next to you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Be a good person. I love that, dude. I love that. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. You're you're amazing. I think the the audience got a ton of ton of nuggets. I feel like I was all over the place. I've never actually taken my time to like really (laughs) break it all down. So I feel like I was kind of everywhere. No, not at all, dude. It was it was great just to like break all that down and just learn and and that's one of the reasons that we love having the podcast too is just like learning from people who are doing great shit. Like, what what do you think? Because we all go through that. We we go through moments where you you know you're not feeling motivated sometimes like and i just feel some some people aren't willing to get started because they're seeing everybody else going oh they just seem to always have their shit together it's like that takes work to have your shit together side note too honestly i mean maybe some people some few people do but i think no one entirely has their shit together i'm just being honest I don't, <laughs> That's I don't, true. and so i think people, i think people see it and like oh my god like i see this person on instagram and they just had their shit together no they don't it looks like they do <laughs> but they but don't, they don't. Meaning in a, in a positive, good way that everyone's the same. True. Everyone's starting with the same shit. So just get out there and do it because you can. You can do it. Adding on to the, my, my slogan, you can do it. <laughs> you can do it. No one has their shit together. I don't believe it. There's a few. You know what I mean? There's a fine few. But I think most people have their moments. You know what we I mean? Do. So, totally. Yeah. Awesome, brother. Well, good. thank you for all yeah. the gains and all yeah, the no knowledge. Problem. We appreciate gains you. all day. Well, thank you all for watching. And, uh, yeah. Boom. <laughs> Take them out.